Christmas is can be a magical time, but if you as a, a mother, let's, I'm just going to focus on moms right now because moms tend to plan most of the things. If we expect it to be our version of magical and our family is just not getting on board, we are setting ourselves up for all kinds of disappointment, frustration. Can I get an amen if you're listening to this right now? <laughs> you, know what <laughs> you know what I mean, ladies. If you're listening, you are probably remembering Christmases of the past where things just didn't go right because your whiny teenager was like, I don't want to do it. Or like your husband was not into it like you thought he would be maybe when you were dating and spent a magical Christmas together. <laughs> I'm just throwing things out there. But there are all kinds of reasons why we can set ourselves up for disappointment. And one of the main ways we do that is expecting it to go the way we built it up in our heads. I am Sherry Fletcher, and this is your spiritual game plan. Change. It's something that happens to all of us. You've invested your time and energy into an important role sometimes for years, and then suddenly it's time for you to move on. Maybe you've worked hard on a dream, and now your path is taking a new turn, but that dream isn't going with you. Perhaps you've raised your kids and they've moved on, but now your empty nest is filled with parent care. Or maybe you're in the middle of diaper changes and laundry piles. If you find yourself asking questions like, where do I fit in anymore? Am I even relevant? How do I find my purpose now? You are in the right place. This is the show for women in a season of transition. I believe that while your roles in life will change, your purpose is eternal. I'm here to help you understand just how intentionally you were made by a creator with a game plan. Together, we'll discover ways to help you unlock the purpose God's placed in you, develop a game plan for your life's calling, and embrace the intentional masterpiece you were created to be. Today, I will be speaking with Jennifer Bryant, a writer, speaker, and host of Practical Family Podcast. She gently guides moms through their homeschooling and motherhood journeys and develops practical tools to help them get through difficult days. She holds a BA in Bible theology with an emphasis on philosophy and apologetics. She and her husband, Bruce, have been married for 15 years and live in Honolulu, Hawaii, where they are raising their two pre-teens. Jennifer knows that busy families need concise, quality resources to lead their family through meaningful holiday moments while keeping Christ at the center. So she wrote a beautiful devotional that is perfect for the Christian family who wants a simple and short devotional with strong foundations of scripture. I know you will be blessed as Jennifer shares the 25 days of Jesus, an Advent journey through the Gospel of Luke. Jennifer. Welcome to the show. I am so glad to have you as a guest on my podcast because you are a, a guest on my Facebook Live, but this is the first time you are a guest on my podcast. And what makes it super special is because I was a guest on your podcast and it's the first time I was ever on a podcast ever in my lifetime. And I was so nervous <laughs> and I was, it was, it was terrifying, but it was such a great experience and you were so gracious and so kind to have me on your podcast. So I'm so glad that you are on mine. So welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, thanks Sherry. Yeah. You cut your teeth on my podcast and now we get to do this thing together. How fun it is. And I should have said aloha. And, and I actually should say, and I might say this wrong, so correct me, but is it um, Male Kalikiyama? It's Mele Kalikimaka. Oh, I knew I'd say it wrong. Okay. Mele Kalikimaka. Mele yeah. Kalikimaka. <laughs> and yes. I may even have the wrong accent in saying that because I'm not native Hawaiian. I didn't grow up here, but I do live, I've lived here for over 15 years now, married to, uh, to a Hawaiian boy, but um, that is the closest I can get. <laughs> and it means and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's right. 
we're and we are starting off the Christmas season, and that is why you're here. And so, before we get started on that, I would love it if you would tell my listeners a little bit about your ministry and your family. Yeah, so I'm I like to say I'm the wife of one and mom of two. <laughs> uh, my husband, uh, like I said, is a, a native Hawaiian, and um, I met him here like. 17 years ago and I moved here to be with him and now we're raising two crazy preteens and a girl and a boy and they're both in middle school youth group doing all the youth group things now so that's what season we're in of parenting just it's it's craziness and it's fun and it's crazy all over again um but uh Bruce and I own a fish taco restaurant here on the South shore of Oahu and the Hawaiian islands. Um, I homeschool my kids. We're at the middle school stages now. So I'm starting to, to get a little insecure about the math stuff, which is okay. I'm ready to farm that out any day now, honestly. <laughs> um, but I run practicalfamily.org where we're focused on helping to strengthen moms for real life struggles. And I try to focus on the, the emotional the mental and the spiritual wellness of mothers because life gets crazy and whatever we go through, I'm not over here pretending to be an expert on all the struggles or anything, but I love to help walk moms through by helping them think through what's happening in their mind when they're going through difficult seasons. Yeah, you do a great job. I never had that wonderful gift to be able to homeschool. It was one thing that uh, my children thanked me for not doing. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for never doing this, mom. (laughs) Yes. I used to tell them I could not homeschool, but I was going to be in their school. And so I was PTA and all those wonderful things and trying to stay on top of what they were doing in school. But I I admire homeschool moms. I highly admire. So that's a great job. There's one question that I ask every guest that is on the show. So I'm excited to ask you. Looking back on your life, how far back can you go to see the very person you are today and who you have always been? That's funny because I laughed at this question because usually we talk about how much we've changed over the years. Mm-hmm. And you're asking me how much I've stayed the same. <laughs> and that's kind of cool because I've always been a, a word girl. I've always been um, curious about language, about education. So I've had this teacher personality my entire life. And mind you, this doesn't make me necessarily a better homeschool mom. It just makes me, I think, capable of handling the things because I like, I like learning. But now I have to parlay that into actually teaching my own kids and the mother or teacher the line gets blurred all the time, which if you've homeschooled, you understand what I mean by that. But um, I, I just remember my first whiteboard experience <laughs> and how excited I was for, for stores to come out with this whiteboard instead of using chalk on a chalkboard. And my dad got me my very own whiteboard with dry erase markers. And it was just, it changed my life forever. So now I, I like to use that method to teach um, whoever I'm teaching my kids, if I'm teaching workshops for adults, I like to draw things out. I'm a very, very visual person and I organize things in my mind. And I've always been that kind of kid. I've always thought that way. Um, My love for everything in the classroom has, has sort of come from my need to make things simpler for people. Mm. And that's where I find God led me in ministry now is because I want to make hard things simple. Even the difficult, you know, cloudy day times where I talk about mental and emotional wellness, I just want to come alongside people and go, I know this is hard, but it doesn't have to feel this hard all the time. Here's how we can make things simpler. Here's how we can choose what we are in control of, you know, it's, it just all has come together. And I'm so grateful now you know, for, for my actual strengths, instead of trying to be like someone else, I'm like, no, this has always been me. I've always been like this. And this is how I can use it um, mm-hmm. to help people now. Um, the same comes with uh, my strengths in education are similar to how I feel about helping people understand the Bible. Um, understand their spiritual 
growth and their path and their relationship to God, you know, which may fluctuate and change over the years, which is expected. And those can be hard times too, to talk through. Um, And then also how a home functions, because often I find that women have a hard time making sense of their own identity and then they connect it to their spiritual identity. And then they connect it to how they're doing as as a mom, as a wife, as a homemaker, maybe. And I'm here to say, okay, let's, let's separate out these things and look at them individually because they don't all necessarily mean the same thing, right? We can't get the same messages from all of those roles that we play. And that's again, another example of how we can, look at things differently. Amen. Yes. I love that. Thank you. (laughs) That's awesome. So like we mentioned earlier, we're starting the Christmas season and there is no better way than to start with an Advent devotional. And so that's why we're here today. I'm so excited that we're going to be sharing the 25 days of Jesus, an Advent journey through the gospel of Luke. And that is what you wrote. And we're going to be sharing it with my listeners. And I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited to share this. So give us a little glimpse at some of the special features of this Advent devotional. Yes. Well, I'm going to show your listeners a quick peek. So beautiful. And I'm showing you, you'll see this elsewhere on Sherry's website, but I also want to turn it this way and show you if you're watching. It's short. It's easy. It's simple. It's simple. (laughs) Like, Like you like to make it. Yep. I wrote it to be easily consumable because we have stuff going on during the holidays, right? And part of what I want to talk about here is, you know, right-sizing our expectations for the holidays, but, but also to stay grounded in what Christmas is all about. And that's why I wrote this devotional, because it takes us through each chapter of the Gospel of Luke. I basically just picked one verse from each chapter of Luke, I prayed and I was like, Lord, which verse am I going to highlight for this very, very short devotional? They're super short guys. I recorded the audiobook and it took me all of like three minutes to record each devotional. So it's a very quick read, even quicker. Listen, if you want to listen to me reading it in the audio book. But it just walks you through the life of Jesus, the whole life of Jesus. And, um, I, I'm just excited about it because I set it up to be an Advent experience and it has the, your little Advent calendar in there. So you can just use your calendar if you want. There's recipes, there's Christmas lyrics, songs in there. It's so fun. I like that it has a cookbook download. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is so cool. And you have a playlist mm-hmm. and songs. I mean, it's not just your typical Advent, you know, devotion where you kind of just read one and put it down for the day. I mean, you, you've got all these different things in there that just make it like a complete seasonal um, Advent that adds, you know, something special each, each day. And, and that's, and and then to hear you read it, it's just kind of extra special. I like that. (laughs) I just wanted to share really quick Yeah, the, the simplicity of it is the short devotionals. And yes, there are all those things that you can choose, but yeah. you don't have to do right. all of them. You know, if they're just different options because I know that people learn differently, right? As a yeah. teacher, I'm like, you may rather sing a song than do a Bible study. You may rather cook with your family yeah. than do this. You know, so there, are, look at this as options. I'm not this like do all these things right. and you'll be happy at Christmas time person. This is, this is a very simple option for that. Yeah. I like that. Thank you for clarifying that. That's good. So speaking of that, when I was younger, I put a lot of pressure on myself to meet expectations. In fact, um, you know, one of the chapters in there, um, December 10, you cover that, you know, Mary and Martha, there's the expectations there that, you know, we've got to do all things. Cause I, I was the Martha, you know, to make sure all the things were were checked. And I I had all these expectations that I put on myself that I had to meet all these moments and make sure all the moments were just right. And sometimes I didn't even enjoy the moments that I made sure happened because I was so exhausted. Um, So what part do these expectations play in planning for the holidays? And and what do you, what do you mean? Like you mentioned earlier by right-sizing our expectations expectations can really start to overwhelm us when we don't clarify 
what actually needs to happen. And the thing about expecting your Christmas to be a certain way means that people often want it to be their version of special. You know, Christmas is, can be a magical time, but if you as a, a mother, let's, I'm just going to focus on moms right now because moms tend to plan most of the things. If we expect it to be our version of magical and our family is just not getting on board, we are setting ourselves up for all kinds of disappointment, frustration. Can I get an amen if you're listening to this right now? <laughs> you, know what <laughs> you know what I mean, ladies. I mean, if you're listening, <clears throat> you are probably remembering Christmases of the past where things just didn't go right because your whiny teenager was like, I don't want to do it. Or like your husband was not into it. Like you thought he would be maybe when you were dating and spent a magical Christmas together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing things out there, but <clears throat> there are all kinds of reasons why we can set ourselves up for disappointment. And one of the main ways we do that is expecting it to go the way we've built it up in our heads, mm -hmm. as opposed to ways that we can right size our Christmas is by asking questions, actually getting in front of your family and asking them, what do you guys love about Christmas? What do you really want to do? And what that does is it gives yourself permission to lay down your vision for just, ju just a minute. Okay. Doesn't mean you're sacrificing all. It just means that you're giving room to your family to voice what they want. And it's an excellent practice in talking about our needs and opening mm -hmm. that up to your family and not needing to be in control of everything. If that tends to be your personality. Now, if you have the personality of, well, I don't care. I, I, it's whatever they want to do. I'll be fine. That, that's great. But also, you know, there are things that you find special about the holidays, too, that you can tap into. And it's okay. It's okay to want certain things. If all you want is hot cocoa every so often because that takes you back to a special time, then that's great. Make sure that that happens. Don't sacrifice it for the sake of everyone else's wants or needs, but there's a way to, to think about this ahead of time by asking questions. And that's, this is why we're addressing this now. You know, if, if we're, let's say if we're in November, start at the next family meal, just ask them, ask them, what do you guys want? What's, what's special to you? Giving gifts. That's, you know, the time of year we're giving and there's nothing better than giving someone the gift of not expecting of them. It's okay if, if you don't get something that you were hoping for, giving them the gift of letting them say no, letting them say not this year, or I'm not, I can't do that and not being offended by it, not being hurt by it. It doesn't mean they don't like you or that they think your idea is stupid. They're not saying you're stupid. It maybe yeah. it didn't work for them or they're, they're, you know, they're not able to do it. Um, allowing that no. Yes. And absolutely. giving that too. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I love how you frame that as a gift you can give to other people, because I think this applies, especially when, when moms tend to be the one who is in control most of the time, it's, it can be intimidating to be the one who's calling the shots and then have someone maybe have a different idea. And do they think they can, actually say no to you. If you can be the person who is gracious and accepting and open to other ideas and opinions, that is loving. Oh my gosh. I love the way you put that. <clears throat> the, the, the first perspective I was thinking of was um, you can say no, you have permission to say no, maybe to relatives mm -hmm. uh, or you can say not this year we're going to do this instead. And you could only do that if you've already purposed to sit and talk with your family. So if one, you, you have a discussion, have it an open Q and a time with your immediate family. Number two, from those answers, decide what's important to you. And number three, use that to, to express what actually needs to happen and, and have something that you fall back on. Now, the perfect fallback, in my opinion, if you're a Christian family, is time where you come together and talk about what this holiday season means to you. 
and doing a devotion like this is is great. That's why I wrote it because yeah. it it's a short and concise way of bringing it back to the reason for the season, and the recipes and the songs are just ways to engage each other in that. But bottom line, we all need to be free to make our own choices. And when you as a mom are allowing room for that in your own family, and you feel free to voice your own needs, that it's a win-win. Nobody needs to have a power struggle. Nobody needs to be in control. Nobody's fighting you. Like you said, nobody's saying your ideas are dumb. It, you don't have to take any of that personally and start to start to manage your own expectations of Christmas and bring it to light, bring, put them out in front of you instead of kind of keeping them all inside and not seeing anything, yeah. bring all of it out in front and look at it together because yeah. it's, you're not going to lose much if your goal is to keep the family unified in, in love in heart and in spirit. Yeah. And that's what the enemy wants. I mean, this is the time of year that the enemy loves to just stir stuff up because families get into arguments this time of year. You know, who's going to spend holidays with who and uh, what are traditions that we're going to keep or maybe not keep? And if we're not going to keep them, what does that mean? And Satan wants us to keep focusing on, like you said, anything but the reason for the season. So like you said, families getting together and talking about what they want to do and what that's going to mean for the holidays, that, that's just, yeah, super important. Um, in this book, you took a journey through the Gospel of Luke. What is the significance of doing a devotion based on Luke's gospel? And why do you call it a journey? Well, because each gospel, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John focuses on the life of Jesus, but from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. I love the gospel of Luke because Luke himself, as the man who lived, was a very, very practical person. He, he was a doctor. He was a physician by, by trade which meant that he paid attention to detail. <laughs> you know, he, he noticed the, the little movements and the little um, uh, conversations that were happening. He included women in that conversation. It was, it was quite incredible to, to look at Luke uh, apart from the other gospel accounts because it tells a story. It's, it's a narrative, right? And often when we see Christ just as a baby in the Christmas story. We forget that he grew into a man. And, and yes, Jesus is the reason he came down because yes, he eventually was going to die on the cross. I'm like, okay, how about we, we don't just hold the baby in the manger and the crucifixion without looking at the in-between because there's so much to understand the in-between. I'm not asking you to read the entire book. I mean, that would be cool. If you can make that your goal to actually get through the entire gospel of Luke, and it would add fabulous context to what we're talking about here. But all that I am highlighting in this devotional are pieces, because I want you to see, I want you to be able to walk and I'm walking with you. I'm doing this with my family too, as we do it, we're walking through and we're observing the life of our savior from a baby through his ministry and how he impacted real people like you and I, you know, it's, it, it was everyone from, from people who couldn't give back anything, anything. I mean, women, beggars, Pharisees who just didn't get it yet because they were so focused on the law. You know, I talk about uh, how Jesus handled the issue of money, how Jesus handled the issue of, you know, not worrying about what we have right now. And often Christmas season brings a lot of thoughts about stuff and what are we going to do with our stuff? And, and what if we lose all our stuff? You know, it doesn't have to be that. And all of those things just come alive in this, in this gospel. And I just, I want to link arms with you and just walk through it with you because our life is a journey, figuring out our, our, our young life, our parenthood, our, our life after our kids grow up, you know, it, this is why this journey is good for everyone because it's based on this gospel narrative and it's about our savior, no matter what stage you are in life. Mm, I like that. And, and I'm at a different stage um, now that my kids are grown. And for me, you know, I wish I could go back and convince the younger me, 
that, that I didn't have to make, you know, be so, try to capture all the moments and be so intense and try to make things, you know, uh, capture all those hallmark moments as I guess you would call them and just let things be more simple um, and just be special because they were special, not because I was trying to create a special moment and be more relaxed. How have you learned to keep things simple in your family and how has that changed over time for you? Well, for me, it was first realizing that we can't do it all. And that may sound like a trite, more cliche kind of phrase, but you tend to apply those phrases differently in different seasons of life. Like, oh yeah, I can't do it all here either. Oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't try to just do all of this and just do one thing well. You know, you learn different things as you go. Some expectations I've had to let go of, or maybe some dreams or wishes. Like for, for example, I live in Hawaii. I live on a tropical island and I would love a white Christmas. I mean, someday I would love to be in the snow for Christmas. And all of you listening her like, it's not all it's cracked up to be, Jen, believe me. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. I know, I get it. But I want to experience it at some point, you know. And that's not happening unless we plan a trip, right? But if we plan a trip during Christmas, what about my family in California who would be like, well, aren't you kind of come to see us for Christmas? And they're all sweet. I love my family, but we also need permission to be able to say, we're deciding to do this instead. You know, we're deciding to keep it simple. We're deciding not to go to every holiday party. So in the midst of intentional decision-making, we can make our holiday experience simpler Um, And I say this even, you know, the year after the COVID-19 Christmas year, when everyone was quarantining and everyone was had forced family fun, maybe, um, and could and didn't have the option, right? But now that we are opening up and have a little bit more option in that way, we can choose. And the the power to be able to choose uh, allows us to, to, to do too much sometimes. Yeah. But then we can also feel lonely if we don't choose anything. Yeah. If we're like, well, I, you know, my, my, my hopes and dreams and wishes aren't going to be met anyway. So why try, you know, and, and that's mm-hmm. a very hard place to be because God still sees you. He sees you and he loves you and he wants you to have um, a special memorable time with family. We're created for community, you know, it may not be the Christmas of our dreams, but it can, it doesn't need to be nothing at the same time you know he's still there in the midst and he still wants to to bless you through that as you as as we remember him you know also remembering uh we're not going to please everyone so we might as well have the holiday that we actually want (laughs) uh and the last thing i've learned about keeping christmas simple is that it's it's more important to have clarity with each other than to just guess and, and try to do all these things to make it special because that's what you have in your mind or because you think that's your job or your role as the mother to make Christmas magical. Who said, who said that? I mean, it, you may love it and that's okay. I love Christmas. I love the to decorate. I love the ornaments. I love all that, but I'm going to do things that make me happy while blessing my family, while keeping an ear open to what makes them happy as well. And that clarity comes when we communicate. And when we communicate, there's less room for disappointment. I like that one Um, a lot. And I like what you said earlier, Sherry, you touched on this because um, like about just having different viewpoints or one person not agreeing with, with your decision or what, what makes you happy. Um, disappointment does not equal disagreement Mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, There's more room for compromise when you can talk and plan ahead what you want to do and to right size the expectation for everyone. Um, But it's not going to happen if we don't communicate or if we don't try to communicate, you know, not everyone is going to do it in a stellar way. You're not going to get a reaction maybe that you hoped for, but it's still worth trying and pushing through as long as you do it with a heart that says, I, I'm trying to communicate with you because I love you. 
and I want this for our family. I don't need the right answer from you. I just need us to open this discussion. Can we start this now? Right. Yeah, that's really good. I really like that. So we touched bases on, you know, you added some of the elements in this book because different people learn different or like to do different things um, as far as they might want to do a recipe or they might learn by music. Um, but what are some of the significant reasons for adding the different elements in this devotional? Well, the elements like the songs, the, the Christmas songs, the, the cooking, the recipes together, they can if you let them, foster time for interaction, education, and engagement. So you want to engage with your family, but it's, it's easy, especially for me, to just grab a recipe and just do it all myself. Because, yeah. you know, maybe it's my alone time in the kitchen, just to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe it's, it's I, I just, I need to focus on this and that's all I can do right now. And I don't have time for kids to like mess up my thing. But I encourage you greatly to make the cooking time and the song time um, a time to invite your family into it. And even if they don't get all involved or excited about it as you do, it's an opportunity to learn through different modes of, of um, practice, you know, teaching. Um, doing uh, real practical things like cooking, because we gotta eat, we eat every day. It's just a way to look at how to um, involve each other in a different way. Um, the songs that I chose are classic Christmas songs. There, I, there are thousands of, of classic songs, but these were ones that, that most closely reflected scripture. Mm -hmm. um, and so I connected the Bible verses that talk about the themes of these songs to the songs in case you wanted to look up the scripture for, uh, with your family. You can treat it like a, a little mini Bible study if you want, or you can actually use it to show your kids, oh, well, what does it mean when Oh Holy Night talks about, you know, um, you know the, the virgin birth and, and Oh Come Let Us Adore Him, Christ the Lord. Why do they keep calling him Christ the Lord? And I could write a whole nother book about that, but, you know, for now, let's just use scripture to point back to the truth of God's word as reflected in these songs, because men and women wrote these songs like hymns. They read like hymns and it's beautiful because songs is, is just another way to, to learn about, um, about scripture. And it helps us to remember music is a mnemonic device as they say. Um, so use it as a resource like that. I love that. Jennifer, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule um, to talk with me today. And I'm just so proud of you. And congratulations on getting this beautiful devotion out. And as we close, I would love it if you tell us about the extra resources that you've included in the back of this book. And how can the listener connect with you during this Advent season as they're walking through this devotional? Yeah, so in the back of the book, there are QR codes, which is that square thingy that you can point your phone at. If you just turn the camera on your phone and point at it, it'll take you straight to the sites where you can check out these resources. So I made it super easy. You don't have to type in a link or whatever. Um, you can just point your phone at it. And uh, I've recorded the full audiobook, so you can purchase that through my website. If you'd rather listen than read, totally fine, or if you just need it need a way to take it with you. Um, there's of course the free cookbook that I think Sherry, you can, you can yeah. in, um, include in your stuff too. There's the, the easy clickable link there where you just sign up to get the, um, the 12 recipes that I've um, included in the book. There's the songs playlist I put on YouTube. So all the songs in there, um, I just linked to my, my favorite YouTube singer version of it. And I just lined them up for you. So you can just pick them out and play them whenever you like. Um, there's a link for thank you postcards. I just, I love to design and create things digitally. So I made these postcards that you can order as just a thank you. So it's helping your kids practice gratitude or you, you can use them too. And just send uh, a postcard to folks who give you gifts, you know, and it's an easy, it's a little easier than putting stuff in an envelope and whatever. It's just, it's just a postcard and it's, um, 
it's a fun way to practice that. And then there's also a link to the Practical Family Podcast if you want to take a listen. Um, but you can connect with me this season on the Facebook group that I've set up for this book. It's called the 25 Days of Jesus Facebook group. And um, if you if you come over to my site, to the book page, you'll see a way to get there. And, um, and we just are going to have fun discussion and sharing with each other. I'll be doing giveaways. I'll give away signed copies of the book and a little ornament as well. So ornaments like this ornaments like this found these at Hobby Lobby by the way I just love them and um and then we'll have fun walking through the devotion together from December 1st to the 25th so come and awesome. join us and all those links are on the show notes um and what is your website just for the listener what is the the website link go to practicalfamily.org and then you'll see the book on the front page there if you want to get to um, the book page. It's right there on top on the website. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. With one week until we start the Christmas month, you can find Jennifer's devotional on Amazon as well as her website, practicalfamily.org. All links are in the show notes as well. Would you like to discover how to find your relevance and worth in seasons of transition? Join my email subscription at sherryfletcher.com and get the five steps to start your spiritual game plan, a free mini course with videos and helpful downloads. Thank you again for listening to Your Spiritual Game Plan, the podcast that helps you understand that God's got a plan and you have a purpose in it.